Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox, and uh, coming to you today. <laughs> you know, better than the devil is what they say. I know, Real Housewives of Potomac, season three, episode 11, 12, one of those. You guys, I'm sorry I'm late, but, um, and, and if you don't follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you don't know that I had to take Jada to her orientation. So I had to delay my videos a couple of days. We were there Monday and Tuesday, and now I'm back in Atlanta today, ready to give it to you. And the orientation went very well. We didn't drop her off, it's just for orientation. So she's still here, she'll go back in August. Um, but you know how those things go. This is finally your chance to go and talk to the advisors and talk to the financial aid. And you guys already know I was stressed. Financial aid has given me such a bad taste in my mouth because of Joe's experience with Southern. Now, I hate to say it, but your cousins. Oh, child, they leave a whole lot to be desired in the financial aid um, section of the school uh, experience. So I was already, I was super gun shy, like super just nervous about financial aid. And, um, you know, there's still a little few things that we got to take care of, but it's fine. It's working out fine. Um, it went way more smoothly. And, uh, yeah, y'all, Jada got her schedule, and we know what her dorm looks like. And, you know, it's time for me to start getting the stuff for her dorm. So we are excited. But it's a very high anxiety moment for myself. Not super emotional like I thought that I would be. Only because I'm in get it done mode. Like I'm in TCB mode. Whenever I get into this mode, um, it was the same like when my mom died. Everybody was like, wow, you are really taking care of business because it gives me something to focus on and I can't get all emotional and, and crazy and all of that. Now, once it's, the dust settles and she's there and I'm sure Joe's back gone to school and it's just me and Mr. in the house, then I'm sure my emotions will probably take over. But right now, I am like, we got to do this, 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 this. Okay, we got to do this by this time. Okay, get that ass off to school. And then, um, you know, then I can deal with my emotions. That is the Capricorn in me. I am one of those type of people who can compartmentalize things. Um, but yeah, that so that's what's been going on. And that's why you getting this on Wednesday and not on Monday. Okay, I hope y'all watch it. Because I know everybody didn't talk about it. Now it's old news and shit. But you know what? We gonna discuss anyway, you guys. I'm gonna try to make this not long. Because like I said, it's late. And people have already seen the reviews and all that. So we just gonna do a little over general overview. It's probably gonna last the length of a regular review, you guys we'll just try to glaze over the main topics how about that okay the video the review let's get to it shall we okay now let, let me just first open with ashley and this confessional wig <laughs> y'all listen i know she's pregnant so we're gonna give her a pass on the fullness i mean she's bigger you could obviously tell she was very very much pregnant in the confessionals but child that dark ass wig and this purple makeup what the fuck was her people going through to put her on? I said, uh-uh, now this ain't it. This ain't it, but you lucky you pregnant. I'm going to give you a pass on that, but don't do that shit no more. Anyway, you know, she's telling us about how she's all about being strong for Michael and all of that. You know, she's meeting with Giselle. Actually, Giselle goes over to the restaurant. Giselle's in regular messy mo mode, you know. She's so concerned for Ashley. <laughs> And Giselle really has no storyline. It's so funny to me. So when Giselle tries to bring up Michael, you know, is he here? You know, I thought he would be here with everything that you're going through. And, and she was like, no, he's not here. And, you know, Michael's fine. You know, we're stronger than there ever. Why well, can't get my words together? I don't even have them damn braces on them. Ain't them teeth looking sparkly? Ding, ding. Well, Giselle's whole thing is he's done this whole ass grabbing thing before. So, like, that's what he does, you know. And she's just more upset about the whole disrespectful um, aspect of it. And Ashley says, listen, that was in jest. That was his friend, okay. He didn't know that guy. W why would he just grab his ass out the blue? Because he's Michael, and that's what the fuck he did. He didn't really know Katie's boyfriend at the time either when he grabbed his ass. So, um, don't act like it's that impossible. But you know what? I got it. Ashley got to be there for her, man. She cannot let him see her sweat. So, she's just going to... Whatever she got to do. G Giselle's like, you, you cool with it? Well, I, you know, I'm straight. You, that's all you got to worry about. When people ask you about what's going on with me and Michael, you just tell them that when I'm ready to tell them, I'll let them know. And you. How about that? I said, that Ashley, that bitch is strong. I got to give her that. And then we find out why she's strong when she goes to her therapist. 
And, uh, you know, just basically talking about her daddy issues. You know, the dad abandoning her when she was younger, um, actually very young, a year old. So she didn't even really know her dad. Um, and it was just her mom. And, you know, it's the full classic daddy abandonment, you know, people that have, um, you know, that type of issue. And it's real. You know, I know enough people who, who didn't have their father in their lives that it has affected them. So I won't, you know, I won't tease her on that. It was interesting that she did admit that Michael is Paul Paul. Okay, that she she do use him as the stand in as her father. I mean, we all saw it, but she finally admitted that to the therapist. She looks for guidance and structure in him. And I'm sure it helps that he's a millionaire as well. All right, they they play that down on the show. But look up Michael. You'll, you'll find out quite a bit about Mr. Man. He's definitely, he definitely got it, y'all. He got it. Now, the therapist tells her that you don't have to be strong for him, you know, in the capacity of him being your dad. That's your husband, all right? You, we would hope that he would make the choice to be there for you the same way that you would be there for him. And it doesn't have to be about the fact that because you get this guidance and structure for him. So stop putting all that heavy weight on you of trying to please him. How about Ashley? What makes Ashley happy? Well, what's going to make Ashley happy is her talking to her dad. So she goes to her mom's house. And uh, mom seemed to be doing okay. And she's talking to her mom about her father. You know, feeling like... The reason why she can't get past a lot of things in her own life is because, you know, she felt abandoned by her father. Like, she used to ask her, her mom when she was young, like, where's her dad? And why don't he come around? And why don't he talk? I said, bitch, you lucky. I, you lucky I got some damn compassion for people that go through these things, okay? Because um, Ashley, for all of her fucked upness, you know, I, I, again, I, I don't have this issue my dad was always you know my mom and dad were together until my mom died so it's hard for me to speak on how she really may or may not feel so I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let her I'm gonna let her be I'm sure you guys will will discuss in the comments whether or not you felt like she was genuine I mean I really did feel she was genuine you guys though when she was looking at the picture um, on Facebook because the dad had been blocked her on Facebook when she reached out to him she was looking at the picture because he didn't block the wife or the mama her mother and she was really really crying like the ugly face for real cry 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 right there and I was just like well this is a moment of vulnerability that the therapist was trying to tell her that she needed to have okay of course she's with her mom so you, you definitely feel your safest with your mother um, but I'm sure they'll bring it up at reunion and all of this. So, like I said, only because, you know, I, I want to give her the benefit of the doubt that she really is having her issues with this. I ain't going to say much about it, but you guys, leave. I'm going to leave it up to you guys. And y'all discuss however you think it is that Ashley really was or was not feeling. Um, but as far as Ashley is concerned, she still feels like she needs to reach out to her father. So she is going to, I guess, go to Georgia where the man supposedly is and confront him. Oh, no, those, the, you know, it's so interesting when people want to do things like that. When a person has clearly told you that they don't want to be bothered, like, why do you feel it in you that you still want to confront them? I mean, that's another one of those things that I don't understand. Okay, because I'd be like, fuck you. But maybe I wouldn't be. So that, that, that's the part where I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to let Ashley do Ashley right now. But you guys tell me, any of you who have had the same experience, would you not be satisfied until you definitely have tried every single way of reaching out, including confronting the person that's clearly told you already that they don't want to be bothered? Okay, y'all let me know, what, you know the 411 on that one. Now, let's, let's talk about Giselle and her girls. Now, let me tell you one thing that I love about Giselle's girls, okay? For all of Giselle's bitchiness, I think that the fact that her girls are going to keep her honest is what is going to keep us from just 100% hating Giselle. Giselle get on my fucking nerves. I don't like her, but I don't hate her. And I think a lot of it is because she has things in her life that keep her honest. And honey, them girls... Them girls don't give her no fucking passes, okay? And not only that, but they will tell her what it is. And I think that she appreciates the fact that her girls um, and her have a relationship that's open enough for them to tell her how she feels. And it was interesting that they did all that on camera. That middle one, I mean, she's a twin, 
But I bet you, I bet you she was born second. I'm telling you, that middle child syndrome, um, somehow always, when you have three kids, I told you guys this before, I truly believe that that middle child gets lost in the sauce a lot of times for whatever reason, and maybe it happens the same with twins, you know, when you have three kids. But um, what was her name? Angel. Angel felt like Giselle had a favorite, which was the oldest one, Grace, and then she felt like, you know, she's always there for Adore. Was that her name? Adore? I believe that was her name, but not there for her. You know, and Giselle, she didn't get offended, and she didn't, you know, she was just like, okay, this is a problem. Like, I, I definitely need to fix this. And um, so, these are the only scenes where I feel like, okay, Giselle is herself, and I can... You know, I can appreciate her with them girls because, honey, them girls ain't, they ain't letting up. All right? Just imagine, like, a, a, a lighter skill, Riley. Because <laughs> y'all know Riley gonna tell it, too. So, Giselle, later on, we see her go out with um, um, Angel. You know, this is her mommy and me time. And, again, Angel just tells her exactly, you know, how she feels and, and what she feels like she needs Giselle to do to get to the point where she don't feel like she's lost in the sauce. Giselle always says, you know, I don't worry about her because I, you know, I always know that she can handle it. But as a child, you know, you don't want, you don't want, because you be going through your own shit too. And I think most people who have siblings, there's always one sibling that feels like, okay. There's always one sibling that feels like, okay, they just... You know, don't help me as much as the other one. or You know, however that goes. Your parents be in the mindset of thinking that one of them may be more fucked up than the other one. So let me help this one over here that's fucked up all the time. But they don't know that the one that's doing okay as far as the parents is concerned really ain't doing okay. They just ain't got to ask all the goddamn time. They gonna work it out on their own, you know. So... Maybe this is a way of Giselle catching it before it gets out of hand or kids get older and then, you know, it's, it's still going on. That middle one feeling like, you know, she ain't getting no attention and all of that. So, yeah, that's what I mean. I, I really feel like I like Giselle and her girls. Thank God for her girls. That's what I will say. Otherwise, we really wouldn't want to be dealing with Giselle. And then, you guys, let's just talk about Robin. I mean, listen... Robin is another one who don't seem to have much of a storyline this season. Um, so it hasn't made me feel like I just can't deal with Robin. It's a lot of the same things with Robin, but I also think that she's starting to realize kind of how silly she... Well, I'll start to think that she'll realize how silly she sounds about something. And now, you know, she's changed, but then she'll turn around and do some stupid shit again. So anyway, she's at her hairstylist getting her hair done and she's talking to her about how expensive it's been you know to flip this house she didn't realize once she finishes it she's got to stage it and then she's got to you know show it and have open house yes girl it's called the whole thing we don't just drop off after we fix the house up now you want to sell it right and you want to get top dollar you didn't see enough HGTV to know that these people want to see it with some furniture in it okay so whatever but the conversation about Juan wanting a girl I was like, what? Okay, he's feeling guilty about the fact that he wasn't necessarily there for the boys when they were little, so now he wants to try it again, you know. And that would all be fine and good, but what is this whole thing happening here? Y'all not together, but you, I mean, we ain't even gonna talk about that no more, because obviously they're together, okay, without the title. Okay, enough ambiguity in between them to, to not know what the fuck is going on here. You know, but Robin does say that, you know, can we be married before we talking about kids again? So I'm thinking to myself like, oh, well, finally, maybe Robin gets it. But when the, when the, ho when the housekeeper, when the hairstylist tells her that she going to talk to him about it and she was like, no, 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 don't say nothing. Girl, well, why not? Because who going to say it? You just going to keep on hoping he watch it on the show? Why not watch this shit? <laughs> he don't give a fuck about what y'all discussing on this show. As far as he concerned, he's fixing to have a baby, and he's still gonna act like y'all not together, but y'all together, you know, this halfway in, halfway out, you know, we don't know what the hell to call it kind of relationship. Girl, ain't nobody got time for this. Okay? Ain't nobody got time for it. 
But um, hopefully Robin is getting tired. Girl, if you have another baby with him and y'all not... Listen, it ain't for me to try to figure out people's relationship. Okay? Just don't tell us about the dumb ass shit and we won't make no judgments on it. How's that? Now, let's jump over to Miss Candace. Four hours later, after the whole big showdown at the hoedown, um, she is having tea with her mother and they're discussing um, homework that the doctor has given them um, to work on. What's interesting to me is Candace has all these guidelines that her mom, you know, she wants her mom to have or she, you know, wants her mother to come up with where they can deal with each other better. And um, while the mom is a piece of work, for real, why is it that Candace has all the problems with the mama, but the mama ain't allowed to have no problems with Candace when Candace obviously isn't perfect? Now, you want this woman to be respectful, not to have any jabs. You want her to change her expression on her face. Okay, honey, that just comes with it. I'm sorry. We ain't changing expressions. <laughs> all right. Um, but the mom seems like, okay, fine. She'll do that. But what about what Candace is doing? I think Candace almost feels like she's perfect. Or that she don't have as much that she needs to do that the mom does. You know, was I the only one that was getting that impression? I was just like, well, Candace, I mean, you got a good little amount of work to do, too. You know, we got to give a little to get a little. It was just interesting. It just seemed like the whole thing was more about fixing old evil dots, um, <laughs> you know, side. And nothing on Candace's. Was y'all getting that? Okay. Anyway, let's fast forward to Monique and Chris um, and the kids. They are going to have their sonogram of the baby. Okay, they've invited Karen and, and uh, uh, Candace there, which was like a shocker to me. Because last episode, they was at each other's throat and we crying and doing all of this. And then you got Monique, I mean, uh, Candace there too. So strange. And obviously, the Bravo people put that together. Because I don't know if I'd have been ready for it just yet. E on either side, if I was Candace or Monique. But fine. We get up in here, you know, Candace like, I've never had a sonogram a day in my life. That's because back then, did they even have sonogram? Well, I guess it was just 20. Well, you know, they didn't do 3D. If they did, it was for the rich folks. So maybe she knew about it. When I was having Joe and Jada, honey, Kaiser Permanente did not have... 3D sonograms, but she had to come for Monique, and um, Candace decides that, you know, and Candace says that even though, you know, they had a little tiff, that, you know, she's going to be, oh my God, my eyelash, what is it doing? It's bothering me. I think I didn't mess them up. I didn't fuck them up. So anyway, she gets on the little table, you know, they doing the sonogram, we see the baby, okay, the baby looks just like Chris. I was like, Lord, is it a boy or is it a girl? You know, they never told us, but the baby looked just like Chris. Um, then they kids. Ooh, I really don't know why you would even bring your young kids to the sign. Like, they, her kids don't have the attention span to be sitting up here trying to get measurements and all of this on the baby. You know, so they get to cutting up. And because Chris don't want to whoop nobody ass on the damn camera. <laughs> They tell them, you know what, we're we going to go on and go and we'll finish up this sonogram thing later. Anyway, they got what they wanted, I guess, for the little sh uh, shot, the little scene. But um, Karen, Monique, Ma uh, Candace, you know, Karen wants to have a little talk. You know, just wait a minute, hold on. Before they pull us out of here, I just want to have just a touch basis with you both. They're like, okay, mom. But no, it's not like mom. How about older sister? Monique says she just misses the the old Candace, the bubbly Candace. Karen says, you just seem to have a lot going on. Um, some of it might have to do with your mom. Like, what is really going on? Okay. And Candace does tell them, yeah, I do have some things going on with my mom, but I don't want to use that as an excuse for my bad behavior. She did realize, or at least she felt like Monique was being sincere at the hold down when she came up to her and was crying, you know, and that kind of made her realize that maybe she was tripping a little bit. So she apologizes to Monique, you know, and them two seem to make up, you know, and, and, and I guess Candace does realize that she has some work to do. So good for them, even though even after that, you know, kumbaya moment, I still still sense 
something between Candace and Monique. It, it ain't 100% cleared. I don't think so anyway. But whatever. Um, Chris and, Mo and Candace are going to have dinner with the Samuels and the Hugers. She said that the fight that they had the other day was a little bit silly, she will admit. And it has kept the tension kind of going in their relationship. So, you know, hopefully this night out with the other couples will loosen some of that um, bad air between the two of them. All right, so you good with Monique now? She says, well, yeah, she feels like, you know, as far as she's concerned, her and Monique are fine. I was like, mm -hmm, even that kind, even that you know, answer was a little strange to me. We get there, we see the Hugers, you know, Karen. I think that it is great that Candace and Chris is here, especially Candace. I think it's important that she sees that being married works. I don't want to see her all dusty and alone like Giselle on an island all by herself. No! They get on the subject of babies. Monique is talking about the sonogram and, and all of that. And, and, and Candace mentions, you know, well, maybe you can hold my baby for me. All right. Because I guess Candace is still not ready. Now, this is getting into, for some reason, Chris is getting uncomfortable. Uh, I still wasn't able to read exactly why. But, um, you know, she's talking about them looking at homes, you know, six and seven bedrooms. And, and, you know, Karen was just like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you guys about to move? Well, possibly. Okay, and um, yeah, she needs six, seven bedrooms. Monique was like, oh, you want a mansion? Okay, child, if you ain't got the Kool-Aid wallet in the shepherd's <laughs> baby steps, girl, baby steps. All right, now you trying to do all this and mama ain't kicking in. Okay, maybe that Real Housewives Potomac uh, chick, maybe that is doing something for her. But uh, she said, yeah, she gonna need a bedroom for, for every child. You know, when me and Uncle Jessup got together, <laughs> I was the same exact way. I needed five and six bedrooms, but I didn't even need it. I never needed it. Uncle Jessup sitting over there looking like, yeah, gave me all this hell for nothing. But y'all, when they brought the, the food out and y'all saw Karen give a lesson in um, uh, um, oyster slurping, <laughs> you're going to fucking kill Uncle Jessa. He was just like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, is that all I get? That's all you're going to get at this table. <laughs> y'all, don't, don't, don't test Uncle yeah, had to at least show these young ass niggas something up at this table. And then I was like, listen to Uncle Jessup trying to throw his hand in the shady business. He tells uh, Candace, you actually sing pretty well. I heard some other people was trying to sing around here, but you can do it. And she was just like, oh, look at Uncle, Uncle Jessup. Monique says, speaking of people that can't sing, I met with Ashley. <laughs> <Today. laughs> I was like, oh, y'all are really a mess. So she's talking about you know, what Ashley was saying, how she feels um, uh, 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 um, closer to Michael than ever. Candace was like, what are you talking about closer? She, he might go to jail. Like, what, what are we talking about here? Monique was like, well, evidently the interesting thing was th th this whole thing happening at the rainbow party. It was when we were all about to take a picture. Remember, we were about to take a picture and we couldn't find where um, Michael was. And then they show a flashback of them all like, where's Michael? Where's Michael? You know, and. Honey, Michael is down there commencing to grabbing asses. We even learned a little bit more that Chris was called. I said, oh, okay. Now it's starting to make more sense why Candace has felt a little bit more vested in this whole thing. Your man is involved. Now, Chris evidently was down in the basement at the same time. The cameraman had said that Chris was a witness. Chris said he didn't really see it. Okay, or he said he didn't see it, period. But he was called in, I guess, because he was down in the room at the time. But, um, you know, the whole time Candace was like, mm hmm <laughs> y'all been going off on me. You ain't even know all this was going on. Okay, that's why it's been killing her to talk. But the whole thing is, even if you do know all of this, still, what are you getting out of it? Okay, and I don't think that we can't get Candace to understand that. You know, Candace's whole thing was, even if they're going to be swingers, if they have an open relationship, you know what? Just say that. But the whole thing is, why do they have to say that to you? Th that is none of your business still. We cannot get this girl to understand this for nothing. Fuck wrong with you. We already said that this is their relationship, not yours. Okay. They want to go and fuck other people and grab asses and, you know, put face in the place and doing whatever the hell they got to do. That is their business. So I still can't understand why Candace is feeling so 
what is the word she used last week? Vindicated. Because now what? Okay. So Chris was down there. Now what do we do with that? I'll tell you, I am so over this whole Candace and Ashley and Michael and all. I just, I'm over it. I'm done. All right, rock stars, that is it. Get off of there here. I still got to do claws. Um, tomorrow, I am going to do love and hip hop and pose. And then top of the blogs is going to be pushed to Friday. Okay. So, yes, we have an abbreviated week, an amended schedule, and we'll be back on track next week. All right. But anyway, I'm going to get off of here. Let me get to claws. So, make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is for It's Rocks. And everything else I do will be in the bottom box. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Till next time, Rock Stars. Bye.